Hi, my name's Neil. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me. I'm 43 years old. I've been skating for about four years now after taking around 25 years off the board. I skated as a youngster, stopped in my mid-teens and then started again about four years ago. And this whole channel is about me getting back into skating, learning everything I ever knew how to do before and progressing beyond that and seeing what I can learn before I'm too old to skate anymore. And today's video is quite honestly the best thing I've ever done on a skateboard. If you've been following my videos recently, you'll know that I've been trying to improve my 50-50 grinds and get them better, mainly in big bowls and pools. And you'll have seen that I got some pretty good ones in the middle pocket of Crystal Palace pool, which is one of my favorite places to go. And in my last video, I took it a little step further by going to something a bit higher at Epsom Skate Park and 50-50ing the corner of the deep end of that bowl. And I mentioned previously, the ultimate goal was to be doing it in the deep end at Crystal Palace. So today was the day to see if that could happen. All right, so it was a beautiful day. The weather was amazing. I got to the skate park a little bit early compared to the rest of my friends. I think I got there about an hour before the first one showed up. I decided with this video actually to embed the time code in the screen. So you'll see at the bottom of the actual video, there is time code running. And that's to give you an idea of the time frame of the session, because it was possibly one of the longest sessions I have ever done. Just bear in mind, I think the time code is an hour out, so it's running an hour late. So just subtract one hour and that's actually the real time that things were happening. But it doesn't really matter. It just bears relationship between the, the clips and you'll see how how long the whole thing took. But anyway, as I say, I got there a bit early. I was already warmed up and you'll see even from the first clip in the video, the sweat on my back, my t-shirt is wet. It was a sunny day, it was warm and I've been skating for a decent amount of time already. So I was already warmed up. So let's get into the video and just take a look at a couple of warm up runs. And I was basically feeling things out, doing some 50-50 grinds on the far flat wall. That's kind of my favorite place to start off with in a session uh, because it's the easiest place to do them. So uh, let's have a look at that. It feels the same. It feels like it needs speed, but... All right, so I don't know at what point it kind of dawned on me that I should be looking at the deep end, but I thought I'd try a jump out and just see what it felt like. I'd never actually jumped out of the deep end here before. If you look back at some of my other videos, I recently taught myself to jump out of the vert ramps. And so this was a lot easier. This bowl is eight and a half feet deep. Uh, it's got half a foot of vert and the vert ramps I usually skate are uh, 10 feet to 12 feet with half a foot to a foot and a half of vert. So uh, they're usually bigger. So this was actually no problem to jump out of to start with. So yeah, I tested the jump out, but carried on with a couple more grinds and the flat wall there and then moved into the middle pocket where I'd previously got some 50 50s. <laughs> Uh, 
OK, so that warm up all felt fair enough. And, you know, there wasn't really much avoiding it now. I needed to start concentrating on the deep end. And the long struggle begins right here. I started off with an awful lot of jump outs just to get the feeling of coming out from being horizontal when you're coming up the transition to the point where you tip over the coping to stand upright. There's a, a very strange feeling when you're skating something very steep. The difference between being on the wall, so this, this is my feet and this is my head, I'm coming up the transition and being on the wall, but then tipping over the coping and standing upright there's a kind of strange feeling of pushing yourself up that far. You don't feel it so much when you're skating something like a mini ramp because you're going from there to there. But from a vert wall, you're going from there to there. And if you've never done that before, it feels really odd. And uh, that was part of the problem with me learning to jump out. So to begin with, I was jumping out the top and just getting a feeling for jumping out and maybe beginning to rotate my shoulders round for the turn. It was also a great kind of safety mechanism for me. I felt like if I could jump out the top or bail out of the top, no harm done, you know. If I'm bailing back down into the transition, uh, I need to make sure that I'm against the wall and I get a good knee slide out. I definitely don't want to be running out of anything at this height. So uh, it was a good safety mechanism to know that I could jump out into the platform. And then from that point of just jumping out and beginning to feel what was going on, I started to begin to learn the turn. So the kick turn that I would be doing to get into a 50-50. So it was a jump out with a kick turn, uh, but I was still coming out the top, still in my safety zone of just getting a feel for the turn. <laughs> At that point, I realized that I needed to carve a little bit wider to get the turn. Going straight at it was kind of making me fly out the top with too much energy. What I really wanted to do was transfer that speed and energy into going the length of the coping rather than straight out the top. You know, if I was flying out the top, I'm way too far away from the coping. So I want to transfer that energy along the coping. So that means coming at a wider carve and changing my direction in line with the coping parallel. So if I carve around and become more parallel with the coping, my grind will take me along the coping. If I don't carve around wide enough, it's going to take me out the top. <laughs> And that's my friend Raf telling me I was going too fast. But me, no, never too fast. You can never go too fast. It was just a case of needing to, as I say, transfer that direction instead of going out the top to going along. So that wider carve needs to happen. Oh, <laughs> 
Yep, still recording. Yeah, I managed to hang in there and all I really wanted to do was keep on my toes and lean in enough that I was turning my trucks and rolling around the coping enough to stay on and then uh, just go for it, tip myself in and drop in. And I was so focused on that and sticking to the coping and, and leaning in for the drop in. I wasn't really looking where I was going. I just needed to get back in there. And so when I went back in, not looking where I was going, I was straight back in and heading for the vert wall again. So I just had to quickly jump out the top. Luckily I did, but uh, I was so completely discombobulated with the fact that I actually made it back in again and I was still on my board. I really wasn't paying attention to where I was going and just getting back in and jumping out the top was enough for me. But it really was a landmark moment, success. You know, I, I'd gone through the motions of what I was aiming for. Now it wasn't pretty, but I hung in there enough to complete the, the motions. And I now knew in my mind and my body what it was supposed to feel like. And then I could work from there on tidying it up. So once I knew what it was supposed to feel like, it's time to go full send, go for it, no holes barred. I know how to do a big 50-50. Now I know how to do it in this deep end. So there's no excuses. Just go for it. And there you go. I'm totally stoked. I got it exactly how I wanted. I was tipping in enough all the way around the grind. I wasn't kind of rolling around the platform slowly. Uh, I blasted around there and got back in again and pointed myself in the right direction to ride out of it. So yeah, mission accomplished. I'm absolutely stoked. And just to make sure it wasn't a one-off, let's go for a second one. There it was, textbook. So two in a row that I'm really happy with. I was going to call it a day right there because I think, you know, don't want to push my luck too far. I completed my mission and got it exactly how I wanted. I was super stoked. Everybody else loved it. Um, it was literally the best day of my life on a skateboard. And I'm so glad that I caught the whole process on camera and I'm able to show it to you today. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'm just going to show you those clips again in slow motion just so that you can see what's going on. Uh, notice how much I'm leaning in and how my board is kind of cross locked and, and tipping in on the coping. I'm leaning in enough to keep the lock and uh, keep the grind locked in. But I think that's all there is to say. Thanks very much for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you like the video, please leave a like below. It makes a massive difference to the amount of people that get to view the video. The more people that like this video, the more people it gets shown to on the suggestions in YouTube. It's just how the algorithm works. So thanks very much. And I hope to see you again very soon. Take care.